Welcome to the next installment of the How to Install Recess Lighting Series. I'm Kendall here with Venosa Pros and Joes, where we help you simplify the renovation and remodeling process with product tooling, gear reviews, as well as renovation tip and strategy videos. So if you're interested in renovation, remodeling, repair, real estate, home improvement, or property maintenance, then subscribe because this channel and this content is for you. So in the previous installment, we had nine placeholders in our ceiling for locations for our recess lights. And after meeting with the client, it was determined that the nine light location layout was too predictable because we just had three rows of three and it kind of drew your eyes to it and was kind of underwhelming. So what we did was we went ahead and added four additional light locations, giving us a total of 13. And that gives us a opportunity to kind of break up the overall design and layout and your eyes aren't automatically drawn to three lines of three. So as a result of making that change, what we had to do was go back and space out all of our light locations again. Now in the previous video, I mentioned that it's a good idea to go ahead and just get your design layout up there initially to make sure that you're okay with the way that your light locations look in general before trying to make sure that all of your spacing is 100% correct. And so now that we've kind of finalized what our overall layout is going to be. Now we're at the phase where we're going to be fine tuning and making sure that we've got all the locations exactly where we want them. So if you look closely, you can see that there's a faint green line on the far right side there. That is our laser level. And we've got that line set up along that wall. And we've got three recessed light locations there that are lined up exactly along that wall. And now we're just kind of going through and spacing out as much as we can based on the light locations there. And if I kind of move the camera around here, you can see that we've got our three rows of three here on our diagram. And we're gonna go back through and add our four additional lights there. But if you look closely here, you can see we've got the same spacing here all the way across between our top two rows. And then the spacing is also the same between our bottom two rows. Remember that in this location, we had a fixture there in the center, which was a chandelier. And so all of our spacing is kind of based off of that as our central focal point because we were able to do our layout without having to move that location because it was so close to the center of the room. So now I'm gonna draw in our four additional light locations that we did not have in there initially, giving us a total of 13. And then these will be the four that we're gonna to have to fine tune the most to make sure that they're spaced properly. And so that one right there is that one. This one is this one. This one is this one. And then that one up there at the top left is this one over here in the back over there. So as you can see, we've got the laser running in two directions now, just kind of trying to line up the line there along the line where the chandelier was. And we're just kind of trying to fine tune everything. So even though we've got the laser, I'm doing things like this, basically making a spacing between each of the fixtures is going to be easier to do with a tape measure as you see me doing here and just trying to make sure that you've got everything lined up the way that you want it. One of the reasons why it's a good idea to do a diagram is to make sure that you're keeping all of your measurements straight because as you're standing up there on the ladder, what you'll find is your mind can start to wander and you can unintentionally do things or transpose or remember measurements wrong, especially when you're gonna be doing this many measurements over and over and over and over and over again. This is another reason why it's a good idea to have placeholders on your ceiling. And another reason why it's a good idea to have a high quality painter's tape, which is what we're using here in this space, which is going to allow us to be able to move our light locations around and kind of adjust things as needed without having to worry about getting glue or residue from the adhesive on our ceiling here because painting this ceiling is not part of this project. So I'm continuing to move around here and just kind of fine tune and adjust, fine tune and adjust. Here in a moment, you're gonna see we're gonna move that laser. We're gonna lay it out. We can have five of these recessed light locations lined up in one line and then we'll kind of fine tune the ones that are out of line. But we're basically just trying to make sure We've in general got the light locations spaced out properly between each other because that's something that'll be more difficult to determine with the laser than it is with the tape measure there. So we're kind of getting everything just kind of laid out just so, but it's already starting to come together really good as you can see. Now, one thing you want to keep in mind is if you're going to be doing the same technique that I'm using with the sanding discs, make sure that you purchase new ones. Don't use old ones as tempting as it could be, because that's just another opportunity to get residue on your ceiling. As you can see here, as I mentioned before in a previous video, this room is almost square, but it's not quite square. It's probably six to eight inches off from being square. So if we had that layout, 
we could easily kind of simplify doing our, our light line up and layout here, but, but it's not. So we can only do one diagonal at a time. So as you can see here, I'm trying to make sure that I've got the laser lined up with our first and last light locations along this line. So we've got five total. We've got four in the picture here, but there's another one that's out of frame. And I'm gonna adjust here in just one second to make sure that we're hitting all those. And then I'll get back on the ladder and kind of move the ones that are out of line, which is more than likely gonna be the two that were added there. So as we look here, you can see we've got one, two, three there that are lined up and you can see that that location is slightly out. So we can just kind of relocate that one there and get it exactly the way we want it. That's the location right there that I just touched where our chandelier was previously located. And so now we're gonna move the laser again and go back diagonal in the other direction and see if we've got any out of line this way. You can see that that one on that far left-hand corner, the one that's one in, you can see that that one's way out to the right. And then it appears that the one here closest to us here at the top of the screen on the right side may be out of line too. We've got another opportunity to kind of get these exactly the way we want it. This does take a little bit of practice to be able to make this laser work the way, exactly the way that you want it to. Some people probably think that using the laser is a much easier, but you've got to know exactly how to use it to be able to get the results that you want. And so one of the things that I also wanted to mention when you're going to be doing a project like this is if you've got a space where you've got two rooms that are attached, like in this space, you can see over there to the left that there's a huge opening leading into another room. You want to make sure that you go over there and check that room before you start drilling any holes because you wanna make sure that your light locations look appropriate from that space because sometimes walls can be out of line and out of straight. And when you look in that room from another room, you can see that some of those fixtures don't look like they're exactly lined up. That looks really good right there. So that's all 13, that's a straight line there, another straight line there. And we've kind of had to finagle with those other four to get them exactly the way that they want them. But everything looks really good right here. Turn around this way and you can see the same thing. Everything looks really nice. The next thing we're gonna do is going to be to drill our pilot holes. And we're also gonna trace out around all of these light locations in the ceiling. And one of the reasons why we're taking so many steps here before we move on to the phase of actually cutting is because as I mentioned before, sometimes when you're doing these type of projects and you're doing a whole lot of ladder work and you're doing a whole lot of steps and doing a ton of measuring overhead and you can easily get your mind to zone out. And you could make mistakes that you knew that you shouldn't have made, but you just kind of lost track of what you were doing for just a split second and ended up making a mistake that is going to be very difficult to correct. And so one of the things that we're doing and achieving by adding in these additional steps, they are actually safeguards to help us prevent from making mistakes that we cannot easily go back and correct. And so now I'm tracing around each one of these light locations here because we're going to eventually be pulling down our placeholders when it's time to actually drill out or cut out with our hole saw. And so that's the location right there. Where we've got our ceiling chandelier was before. As you can see, you can kind of see through it. You can kind of see there's a hole behind it there. And so we're just kind of going through and just going and circling around each and every one of these to make sure that we've got our locations exactly the way that we want them before we begin to take them down because you can easily make the mistake of drilling that pilot hole in a location that is not exactly where it's supposed to be. And then when you actually cut your light location, you realize that it's far off from where it was supposed to be. So we're just kind of trying to make an additional safeguard here by doing it this way. We're almost done here. And then we're gonna start drilling out for our pilot hole. And we're gonna be using a very small bit here to drill into the ceiling to make sure that we've got our light locations exactly the way we want them before we pull out all of our placeholders. So the first thing I'm doing right here is marking my location with a black permanent pin. Here's the drill. And I'm just going to jump around here really quickly and we're going to place all of our holes in here for our pilot holes. And this part of it goes by pretty quickly. The planning phase of doing a recessed lighting project is actually where you spend the majority of your efforts because cutting the holes while it's not clean work, it is pretty easy once you've got everything confirmed with where you want it and you know that you're not going to have any issues when you begin to cut. And so that's what I'm doing here is just making sure we've got everything located and laid out exactly the way that we want it. So we can begin the phase that we can't go back and redo easily. We can do it with confidence that we know that everything is going to work out right. Now, in a previous video, I did mention using a hanger to be able to pop through the ceiling there. If you've got an attic above so that you can see where that light location is, so you can move things out of the way like insulation and things like that. 
Well, you'll see me do that here later on in this video, but actually what I ended up doing is making a slight modification that ends up making a huge difference when you go into the attic and try to locate all these light locations. So I'm not using the hanger method anymore and you'll have to stay tuned to the next installment of this video to see exactly what it is. It is a really inexpensive way to solve the location finding process in the attic. So stay tuned to the next video. Hopefully you found the tips that I've shared in this video helpful. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe and stay tuned to the next installment as we move this project forward and I will see you all in the next one.